this week's ship of the week, the steamer that became Her Majesty's troop ship Birkenhead, was laid down in the city of Birkenhead as the frigate HMS Vulcan. But prior to her commissioning, she was repurposed to carry troops and renamed after her birthplace. Her primary propulsion system was a set of two paddles mounted port and starboard, which made her considerably less efficient than the newest classes of frigates in the Royal Navy, driven via screw propellers. As a result, she was never commissioned as a combat unit. Birkenhead slid down the ways in December of 1845 and was fitted out in early 1846, but spent most of that year without a proper naval assignment. That November, though, she helped drag the grounded liner SS Great Britain off the rocks at Dundrum Bay, Ireland. This illustration was produced by one of her engineers. In 1847, while critically undermanned, Birkenhead was in a terrific collision with the tiny merchantman Horatio in the English Channel, obliterating the smaller vessel. The British Admiralty found Birkenhead at fault. And in 1852, Birkenhead was operating in her troopship role, carrying army regiments and some officers' families to British colonial holdings in Cape Colony, what is now South Africa. She sailed out of Simon's Bay under the command of Robert Salmon. Birkenhead endeavored to use the African continent as a wind block and boost her speed, so the ship hugged the coastline as she made to pass around the Cape. Shortly before 2 a.m., the troop ship struck an uncharted submerged rock near the aptly named Danger Point, tearing her bottom out in multiple places and breaching most of her watertight compartments. Many sleeping soldiers drowned in their bunks. All hands assembled on deck as the ship began to break apart, the foremast and funnel toppling over the side. The sailors, soldiers, and marines stood at attention awaiting orders while the women and children were sent away in the captain's launch. Birkenhead's two larger lifeboats were completely inoperable, so three smaller cutters were filled and lowered shortly before the ship's keel failed, and the doomed ship broke in two and sank, depositing those who remained aboard in the water. Some men managed to swim ashore as well as eight of the nine horses carried aboard the ship. The wreck lay nearly two miles from shore, however, and the seas were choppy and contained the occasional shark. A passing merchantman, Lioness, stumbled upon the shattered rigging protruding from the sea and pulled aboard men clinging to the remains, as well as the occupants of the lifeboats. Of the nearly 650 total men, women, and children aboard Birkenhead, only an estimated 193 were saved. A court-martial of some of Birkenhead's crew held aboard Nelson's legendary flagship HMS Victory later that year was unable to find anyone at fault, and the proceedings were concluded. Despite the horrific toll, the British public marveled at the discipline of the British Army and Royal Navy standing silently at attention while the women and children were put in the boats. The Birkenhead drill would become unofficial standard practice for many merchantmen, and naval vessels in distress in the years to follow, and the now antiquated concept is known today as women and children first. The Safety at Sea Code of Honor was famous, famously put to use 60 years later as Titanic slowly dropped beneath the Atlantic. Queen Victoria personally sponsored the construction of a memorial to the victims, and the Prussian King Frederick IV made accounts of the disaster and British military discipline required reading for his army, at times having the tale read aloud to assembled units to inspire dedication to duty in the men. This dramatic 1892 painting by Thomas Hemi illustrates one of the most, merit, one of the most dramatic maritime stories. The Danger Point Lighthouse was built in response to the wreck of Birkenhead to prevent any other unsuspecting ships from meeting the same fate at Danger Point. <laughs>